In uh, this tutorial series I will color this door. I asked you to say what you wanted me to do for next tutorial and uh, many of you asked for doors, wood and stones and these are all in this drawing. This is a page from uh, Enchanted Forest by uh, Joanna Besford and I already started coloring this page but I decided to erase as much color as possible so some here and there you can see some remnants of, of colors um, but um, when I colored this page, I was a bit frustrated and uh, because the, the paper in this uh, see, uh, Enchanted Forest book uh, does not match very well with the pencils that I have. But uh, recently I purchased a set of Erogeton pencils and they seem to work a lot better. I do not own the complete set, so I will use a mixture of Erogeton, Brownsil and Faber-Castell pencils, the Polychromos, and also some uh, Carandash Luminance pencils. And then we'll see what, uh, what we can do with that. When I start coloring a new page in a coloring book, I always wonder um, what time of day it is in the page, in the drawing, what temperature it is, the weather, and some all of that things. Now in this case, because there are not many plants and there's not so much sky, um, I am more thinking about how old is this door? Uh, does it look weary or is it well maintained? Um, well, to me this looks pretty old here and there. Here Joanna drew that the, um, the wood is deteriorating. So I will definitely try to make this door look old. And the first color I will use is a raw umber from Polychromos, Faber-Castell. And I'm just... I am using this um, slightly sideways X. It's not like this, but like this. And I do that because there is a um, how do you say that in English? When I look at the paper, there are small lines in it, and they are all in this direction. And if I would color in this direction, then these lines show up. Maybe these lines do not show up in your book because, as I understand, not all the books have the same paper. But I have come to... Uh, I learned that if in this book, if I use a slightly sideways stroke, that the paper will take the pencil better. I will eventually use strokes in this direction as well. Now because I want to look the door to be I want the door to look old, I will not give the complete uh, door this raw umber color I will mix so I will leave some areas open
And now we'll have to think about uh, these beautiful ornaments. Are they shiny gold? Beautiful yellows? Or are they rusty and old? At this point I don't know yet. Oh, I'm coloring completely out of your view. Sorry. <laughs> Because the paper in my Enchanted Forest book is so smooth, I will have to use a very light touch. So, because the harder I press, the less layers I can uh, put on top of this uh, first layer. And I want to be able to uh, to put as many layers as possible. Now there's another question that I am asking myself while coloring this. Will there be sunlight shining on this door? And if yes, will there be shadow as well? Now this all looks very, very light, maybe. I will keep the nails white. I don't know whether I want to look them look bright and shiny or rusty and old. Maybe it is interesting to make an to, to draw and uh, color the door like a very old wooden door with new shiny ornaments and nails, but uh, time will tell what is the best uh, thing to do. Now I can blend polychroma, so I will. I think you can see it happening. In the end, I will not blend everything because wood has wood has this typical. You know, you can see the veins and the nerves. I don't. I have no idea how you who you how you say that in uh, in English. But there are always lines in wood, and I don't want to uh, to mix those to blend those lines. So in the end, there will be uh, less blending. But for now, I think I will have to. Uh, to study in a dictionary on new English words about how doors are made and uh, to tell you exactly what I want you to uh, I want to tell you I am a constructional engineer architectural engineer but when I was studying that back in that, those days uh, we had to learn English of course in uh, in college as well and but uh, back then German was a very important um, language in construction and architecture now I forgot almost everything when it comes to German I can help myself in German but it is uh, very basic. I have some family living in Germany, so uh, so that is a nice um, 
motivation to uh, sometimes watch German programs on YouTube or TV. Most of the times I watch nature documentaries in German because uh, both uh, Germany, Austria and Switzerland they're beautiful documentaries uh, about nature. But speaking German, uh, I find it pretty complicated because it there are very there are a lot of similarities with uh, Dutch, my first language. And that makes that I'm often confused, that I'm not sure whether I am speaking proper German or just uh, or just being creative with the uh, Dutch words. There are also a lot of English words that have uh, a relation with uh, Dutch. For example, one stroke, one piece of wood in the door, we call that a plank. And if you think about the uh, strange thing called planking, we had on YouTube people planking. Very strange. You know, laying flat. Laying flat as a plank, as a piece of wood. So what we would call that planking, <laughs> planken. So this is the first layer, it's very very basic and now I will add a second layer and I will add some warmth to the color and I'm going to use this brown zeal pencil, Havana brown I have more warm brown reddish colors in my brown zeal set then the polychromal, so I will uh, look and now I will make these light strokes very light I wasn't the most talented kid in school when it came to uh, when it comes to uh, languages, but um, there at some point I thought, well, I had this feeling you need to improve your English, girl. You're going to need it, and not only for the holidays and the vacations. So I did. I started with reading books in English, books about subjects that I found very interesting. And then the internet, uh, I found uh, the internet and YouTube. And then I started to um, watch documentaries about everything that I found interesting. About nature, mostly nature. 
and arts, science, I like science too. If I could uh, do some time traveling, I would uh, pay a visit to Mr. Einstein because I have some questions. <laughs> I would love to understand what he is, uh, what he, uh, about his ideas, how the universe, how the universe operates. Well, and then a couple of years ago, I started my first blog in English. That was about vocal technique, how to sing with a healthy vocal technique. And I made that uh, little blog for the people who were joining the virtual choir. Maybe you've heard of it. If you go to YouTube and you search for virtual choir, sleep, sleep, then you will find a video of conductor and composer Eric Whittaker, who asked people from all over the world to send in a video in which they sing, sang a choral, choral part, so uh, a choral part and then he uh, put all those videos and the sound together and joined all those people into a virtual choir. So a couple of thousands of people from all over the world uh, joined this project. I did too, but um, many singers were having problem with their voices, so I decided to to write something about uh, exercises that could help and to explain some things about singing, breathing breath support, maybe you've heard of that, but because it was a very international group of people, I could not do that in Dutch, of course, who speaks Dutch? <laughs> we do, the Belgians do, and some people in South Africa, the people that over there, they speak Afrikaans, and that is uh, very similar to Dutch. But the rest of the world uh, doesn't, of course. So I decided to write that blog in English. And that was a great exercise for me. And then I started making my first videos about coloring. And soon people started asking, can you can you speak in your videos? Can you tell us what you are doing? And then I thought, oh dear, I can write in English, but can I speak it well enough? So if you uh, listen to my, f if you see my first videos, they are completely silent because uh, I really didn't want to speak. And then in the first in which I speak, there's a lot of silence and uh, 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 <laughs> because I have to think so much about the words. But I think I'm improving now. It is uh, really a matter of just doing and practicing. Now here you can see the difference between the left door and the right one. The left one has the extra color. Now that is really working. And I I didn't color the complete door. It is absolutely uh, 
I have this in mind, I want it like this. So now I will do the other door, but I will do that as homework, so I can work a little bit more on the left one and add another color. I will add a little bit of Van Dyke Brown from the Polychroma series. I'm using a very light touch. If I don't, it will look too too waxy. Well, it can cannot be this pencil cannot be waxy because it is an oil-based pencil, not a wax-based pencil, but it feels like if I press too hard, then the pencil will slip away. This is uh, going very well. Let's do a little bit more. Now you can do so much with a wooden door. I'm thinking about adding a little bit of green in it in the end. Like there is some moss, 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 we call it moss. Yes, moss. So it's a, it's a cool and dampy place. Maybe winter has just, winter is just gone and the sun is shining on the door but there is some moss left, some green algae stuff, that would look, uh, I think that might be nice. And why not try it immediately? I'm going to e use this Erogeton Sage Green.
Now I am going to use a very light touch, so if I am not happy with it, I can erase it, but I don't think that is even necessary. When I add more layers on top of this, the green will eventually disappear, I think. So... I love old doors. The really old ones are rare. Oh, yes, they're just so beautifully manufactured. And sometimes they are hundreds of years old. Last year we were uh, on vacation, my husband and I, in England and I made a lot of pictures, a lot of photos of ancient doors in churches and old cottages, farmhouses So let's see what this green is doing and actually I like this a lot so I will add a little bit on top uh, also These little windows will eventually play a key role in this drawing because they tell you something about what is behind this door. And uh, well, I'll have to think about it. What do I see when I look through the windows? Actually, I would love to make this thing. The window too, but that would be odd because then the doors wouldn't be able. You would you couldn't open the doors. So my architecturally trained brain is telling me no 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 window no window. <laughs> but I'm very curious about what is behind this door. So well. I think my uh, architectural mind is going to win. A little bit over here. Let's take another look. Now the colors so far look very light and I eventually I want them to look full and warm and intense so many many more layers are going to uh, be added so let's now do a little bit of stone and the first question that I ask myself is what color do these stones have you know you have gray stones dark gray light gray brownish gray Brown stones, light sandy color stones, so I will choose the first layer with a color that can be uh, transformed into anything and uh, that will be this uh, erogeton oil yellow.
and by adding this I immediately see that this is probably not the, the best color. I will use them in it more but I think there needs to be more contrast between the stones and the door. The door is at this point warm in colors, brownish, a little bit of green, a br the reddish brown and I think if I make the stones a cooler tone that that will be better. So I will now use a light cold gray from the Brownsville series. I will not cover the complete erosion to color that I just put on, but I will add this one. Also with a very very light touch. And I think this cooler gray is a much better choice at this point of in this phase of the drawing. It could well be that uh, when I uh, I'm a bit further with this uh, project that I will decide in a different direction. Yes, this, this looks better. So I will do some little bit more. Let's do the big one. Now if you don't know, if you want to make your door light or dark or brown or red or green or whatever color and you're not sure about how, which colors you want to use for the stones, just go to the internet and search for old doors and old buildings and find pictures that, uh, that you like. On, on Pinterest I have a uh, board and there I collect images from um, all kinds of doors and oh I'm again <laughs> again I'm coloring uh, outside uh, somewhere where you cannot see it sorry <laughs> My Pinterest board is called, um, I have to think, uh, I believe it is called something with uh, Secret Garden Inspiration, something like that, Secret Garden Inspiration. Just uh, search for uh, Henny the Snow, that's me, and then you will find it and there are uh, doors and bridges and all kinds of ornaments. Now the cool grey in the stones, it is very faint at this point, but I believe that it really helps the door to come to life. So I will stick with the cooler tones for the stones. Uh, right now. You can see there is uh, some green already here. I decided not to erase all the green because well the uh, main focus of this drawing will be on the stones and the wood and not the leaves so I uh, decided to uh, keep those leaves green. And I will add a little bit more green to the grass and I will add this one, the olive green from uh, Karandash Luminance, just a slight touch and I do that because the color of the grass determines 
which color I would like to give the background here in between the grass and vice versa so the background will determine which exact color of green I would like to use so I'm always getting going back and forth from background to forefront and back I will use another luminance that's this one spring green and spring it is we have had some wonderful days over here sunshine beautiful we had a wonderful thunderstorm I love thunderstorms as long as they are not too uh, they need to behave <laughs> they do not have to need to become too wild but I love uh, lightning and thunder today is a grey day unfortunately but um, I see there are some uh, there is some blue sky coming so this is it so far I will add color to the right door as my homework and then uh, in a couple of days I will uh, I will be back with uh, the second episode of this tutorial bye bye